Welcome to the final episode of 100 Movies Everyone Should Watch, where today we're going to be covering the year 1900 until the late 1920s. I understand that there are a lot of great films made before 1900, but I don't think any of them are essential viewings. Kicking off our final episode is our first short film, which is a breathtakingly frightening surreal look at life called Un Chien Andalou. There is no story to it, but instead is a compilation of moving pictures. Although it was released in 1929, it is one of the more shocking films on this list. If you want to see a movie that is edited in a way that is mind-blowing, then you will love this. But if you're someone who has trouble stomaching harsh images, then you will probably hate this. However, this is a great piece of art, and one that all film fans need to see. The Passion of Joan of Arc tells the story of the trial of Joan of Arc on charges of heresy. This is truly one fantastic movie. Great visuals, a unique story with some great religious aspects to it, and all around a great epic. Awesome editing, directing, and performances. The Passion of Joan of Arc is one of those movies that has been studied because it is one of the best pieces of art of the 20th century. It is well made, and if you haven't seen it, it is definitely worth a watch. Metropolis tells the story of a futuristic city and a prophet that predicts the coming of a savior. A movie that is great in scale, this is a great expressionistic film, and one of the best out there. Touching upon artificial life and deeper religious themes, this is one of those movies that is so far ahead of its time. I've mentioned this in the last episode, but Fritz Lang is my favorite filmmaker, and this is one of his best films. Metropolis is the 90th of 100 movies everyone should watch. Napoleon might be the first biography ever caught on film. Believe it or not, the movie tells the story of Napoleon Bonaparte and his early life and military career. What is so fascinating about this movie is how it shows off the early life of an iconic figure. Although this has been done countless times since the original, this is worth watching because of how it laid the foundation for hundreds of films to come. Well acted, shot, edited, and directed, Napoleon is a fantastic film and one that holds up so well. Battleship Potemkin might be the best piece of propaganda of all time. It centers around an uprising on a Russian ship and the fallout that it causes. This is one of the first examples of having a real impact on the world. Tens of thousands of people were influenced because of this movie. It's also really interesting to think of where the country of Russia was at this time, recovering from World War I and preparing for World War II. This is a great look at life almost a hundred years ago in a great propaganda film. The Thief of Baghdad is a fantastic adventure about a thief who tries to win the hand of love from a princess. Although this story has been told countless times, this is one of the best interpretations of the story because of how well the movie is made. The editing, direction, and the character development in this movie are all top notch, and in a silent film, that is so much harder to accomplish. A great narrative strung together by a unique visual style, The Thief of Baghdad is the 93rd of 100 movies on my list. Nosferatu is a great movie based off of Count Dracula. Yes, the vampire from Spongebob came from somewhere. In my opinion, this is one of the scariest early movies and that is because of the fantastic makeup and wardrobe design. Everything feels authentic and this movie puts off that creepy vibe that very few can achieve. A great horror film that has inspired hundreds of remakes, reboots, and sequels, Nosferatu is something special. The Kid was one of Chaplin's first full-length films that continued the story of the tramp who finds an orphan and tries to take him under his wing and raise him. But, like any Chaplin classic, things get a little bit out of hand. What I love so much about this movie is the connection between the tramp and the kid, and you can see the paternal relationship bloom and flourish. A fun, well-acted comedic masterpiece, The Kid is one of Chaplin's finest works. The 
Cabinet of Dr. Caligari is my favorite early horror movie, an expressionistic movie about a traveling magician and somnibus who goes on a homicidal rampage. Movies like this are why I love film, from the crazy and surreal backdrops to the terrifying portraying of Caesar or the innovations made to storytelling. Dr. Caligari is a non-linear narrative told from a certain perspective. This is a movie that legitimized film both as an art form and as a means of storytelling. This is another great look at life in the early 1900s between world wars and Germany and has some great political messages. In my opinion, Dr. Caligari is the best film of the 1910s. Intolerance is directed by D.W. Griffith and tells the story of a woman who is separated from her husband and child interwoven between stories of intolerance throughout the years. A deep, thought-provoking, yet harsh look at life and urbanization, this is really a fantastic movie made by a great filmmaker, but a downright terrible person. This is overshadowed by Griffith's other film, which is a shame because this is an excellent movie. It's an epic story, and one that I would highly recommend. Frankenstein is an adaptation of a timeless story of a doctor who creates life. The story is iconic and as the film is great. Awesome visuals, a great narrative, and impressive cinematography makes this a movie that laid the groundwork for monster movies to come. A great story that is brought to life by film, this is one of those movies that is worth a watch if you have not seen it. The Great Train Robbery is often called one of the most influential films of all time. It shows a group of bandits who rob a train in the Wild West and has inspired so many films. From the new technique of editing, to the use of different angles, or just telling off the story from a villain's perspective, this is a groundbreaking film. A great story that is brought to life by the power of film. I would love to see the audience reaction to this 110 years ago, because it would have been fantastic to see. But even though this isn't a possibility, you can still watch this today and have a great time. The 100th movie is A Trip to the Moon by George Melier, who is arguably the first great filmmaker. It is a shame that so many of his movies have been lost because he made hundreds of excellent films that the world will never see. The movie tells the story of a group of what would now be called astronauts who go to the moon and battle the inhabitants. Just keep in mind, this was made 67 years before a man actually went to the moon. Just like the moon landing itself, a trip to the moon was one big step forward for mankind and revolutionized the film industry forever. The use of special effects and even color? Although shot in black and white, Melier went back and colored in his movie frame by frame in order to help bring it to life even more. There are two main viewing options today, both are great and both are totally worth your time to learn about the 100th movie on my list of 100 movies everyone should watch. Thank you so much for watching the series, it has been so much fun making it, editing, and really learning about these movies too. It's been a little while since I've seen some of them, and it's been great to rewatch and really re-love a lot of these movies. Again, just like last episode, quite a few of these movies are available for free in public domain, so you can search on YouTube for them, and most of them are going to pop up. So thank you so much for helping me on this journey. It was so much fun, and thank you. <laughs>